What if I told you that hanging on to all of this extra stuff could be harming your faith or the faith of others around you. And I know that decluttering is hard. We don't want to be caught without, but hanging on to extra stuff to feel secure can actually make us feel less secure. So if you have ever felt overwhelmed by your stuff or the tasks that you have, well, then we should talk more about that. Hello friends, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. We sort of know that keeping a lot of extra stuff can cause us anxiety, can cause us to feel overwhelmed. We sort of know that, that that's the case. But there are actually deeper implications than just a little bit of low level anxiety hanging around our house. Let me explain. Now, my spare bedroom is a little overrun with stuff right now. Now, most of this is for a craft night that we're having at our church in like a week. The problem is it's not just craft stuff. It's things that I'm hanging on to for someday or that I will go through someday. There's all this emphasis on what I'll do with this stuff in the future. And the craft stuff is just the current cycle of stuff. There's usually something hanging out in this room. This tends to be our catch-all. All of this extra stuff creates a scarcity mindset. And it's not just someday stuff. Sometimes it's sentimental items too, but we're gonna get to that. So what is a scarcity mindset? According to UW Medicine, it is when we fear that there are limited resources. They go on to say that this can lead to hyperfixation on those limited resources or even the potential of them, which causes us to only make short-term goals neglect long-term goals, and ultimately we can end up feeling very jealous and stressed. Well, that doesn't sound good. So when we are in this scarcity mindset, we are only thinking about the time period right in front of us. We're not making long-term plans. We're not thinking about the future very well. We're just sort of worried about our present circumstances. This can cause us to hang on to stuff so that we can feel more secure, but ultimately, hanging on to all of those things to feel secure can cause us to have this hyper fixation that we are not in fact secure. So do you see how having more can actually make us feel like we don't have enough? So what does this do to our faith? Let's think about the outcomes, those kind of emotional outcomes that UW Medicine listed. Jealousy and stress. That sounds a lot like Say it with me now, coveting and idolatry. Yep, you knew it. You knew that's where we were going. I know you did. So this is a good way to think about coveting. And this is not my definition. This comes from Melissa Kruger and The Envy of Eve. Highly recommend that book. I will link to it in the description below. Coveting is essentially wanting what we don't have and not wanting what we do have. Now at first glance, it may seem like hanging on to all of these things doesn't actually have anything to do with either one of those, like not wanting what we do have and, and wanting what we don't have. If we have the stuff, we should not be coveting and we should be happy, right? Not the case. At its core, coveting is rejecting what God has provided for us or not provided for us and losing trust in his ability to provide for us in the future. So we look to others to try and meet that need. And this just came up in my women's Bible study on Wednesday night at church, which is part of it. Like all these little things line up. I hope you're feeling it too. I hope as you're watching this video, something's clicking and you're like, oh yeah, I had a conversation about that earlier in the week. If that's the case, leave it in the comments because I love to see how those threads all end up stringing together, but I digress. Often coveting can lead us to have conversations that sound a little like this. If I could just get that promotion, we would be so much better off. If I could just get rid of this behavior in my child, I would be a much more content mother. If I could just get this room organized, I wouldn't feel so overwhelmed. Do you hear it? Do you hear that longing for circumstances that are different from our own? Now, it is important to note that desires in and of themselves are not bad. They're, they're not coveting alone. It's when we have desires that are contrary to what God's word says, 
or their inordinate desires. Inordinate desires mean that they take something that God has created, ordained, any of those things, and they put a stronger emphasis on it than what really would be allowed. This gets us into the idea of idolatry. Now, idolatry is putting anything ahead of God, whether it's with our time, our money, our worship, anything that we are looking to serve or to feel secure more than we look to God to do that. And this is where this scarcity mindset can really lead us down a path of idolatry. All of these just in case or someday or or but if I need it kinds of items can be something that we cling to to feel secure. This is where our sentimental items can often come into play. We can be clinging to these items and be so unwilling to part with them because we're afraid that we won't remember the things that are associated with those and they're sweet memories and we wanna hang on to them. And while sentimental items are very biblically based, it, it is biblical for us to hang on to mementos or physical objects that remind us of the faithfulness of God and the things that he has done for us. But those desires can become inordinate or outside of the bounds of what God would allow when we cling to those so hard that we can't feel secure in their absence. Where sentimental items or just in case items cross over into the realm of idolatry is when we are depending on them to secure our past, our present, or our future. Both of these mindsets, both coveting and idolatry, impact our own faith, but they also impact the faith of others around us. A scarcity mindset causes us to cling to what we have and in turn, we are unwilling to give. And just like idolatry, our lack of giving can involve our time, our worship, our money, any of our resources that we have. We may see others in need and desire to help them, but want to hang on to the things that we have so tightly that we are no longer willing to give and to serve the ones that God is bringing into our path. Let me give you an example of how this kind of took hold in our house just a few years ago. So about seven years ago, actually next week will be our seven year gotcha day anniversary, which is a little hard to believe. But seven years ago, my husband and I adopted our three little boys that are not so little anymore. And we had a ton of stuff that people had given us. It was so wonderful. People were so gracious to us and we appreciated it so much, but we had a lot we had a lot. We had at one point 42 pairs of underwear. This is the famous 42 pairs of underwear. If you've, if you've been around a while, you, if you know, you know. We had so much stuff just for our kids to wear that I couldn't even keep up with the laundry. We just had absolutely more than what I had the capacity to deal with. And as we were going through wardrobes and I was taking items out, I was very tempted to just put them all in a box and pack them away for the future because I have three boys, which means my oldest can pass things down to my middle child who then can pass them down to my youngest child if they make it that far because boys are so rough on things. But I wanted to keep some of those items in the hopes that I would be able to use those items in the future. Here's the problem. I didn't have anywhere to store it. I had bins and bins and bins of clothing that were just going to sit somewhere for my someday. And it sounds counterintuitive. It sounds like if we were hanging on to things, then we would feel better prepared and we would be more apt to give in some of these ways. And in some ways that is true. We're going to talk a, a little bit here about balance and how we can be better prepared so that we are able to give of our time and our energy and our worship and, and in all these ways that God's calling us to give. But having that scarcity mindset and hanging 
clinging on to things and being fearful that we're not going to have enough or we're going to forget things about our loved ones and we want to hang on with the, to these things. These are all things that I hear regularly when we talk about things like coveting, sentimental items, preparing for the future. It is very difficult for us to separate out our feelings and our emotions from the things that we have in our home. It's difficult, but it's not impossible, which is where this idea that we have been talking about of household strategic planning, again, we're still building while we fly the plane. So I'm taking suggestions in the comments for what to call this whole concept. Somebody, I don't remember who it was, but you know who you are, called it um, strategic struggling. I think it's hilarious. Not the most positive connotation, but funny nonetheless, and unbelievably true. So let's talk about how some strategic planning in our household can alleviate some of this scarcity mindset and this overwhelm that we encounter with the things in our home. First off, it gives priority to the millions of things on our to-do list that are all screaming out to us that they should be first. When I think about this, this issue of scarcity, and the way that our brain can kind of get off track with it, I always think about tyranny of the urgent. And I will leave some information in the description, more information about this for you. But the tyranny of the urgent basically says that there are things that claim to be important and there are things that claim to be urgent and they are competing with one another for our time. And the way that we master that is by telling those things what is important and what is urgent. But strategically planning, thinking about our household with these different kinds of categories. We talked about domains and those overarching themes in our home. So things like personal interest, spiritual formation, our household, our food, nutrition, and hospitality. You know, I love, I have a love hate relationship with that term, but either way, all of these different domains help us to prioritize these tasks that we're doing. And so when we get into that scarcity mindset, really sorting out what do we need and what do we have and getting it in a little bit more logical order can really help to alleviate some of that hyperfixation and anxiety around not having enough. Now, the other way that this kind of planning helps is really to bring order out of the chaos. That's a lot of what we're talking about when we think of the tyranny of the urgent. We're prioritizing, we're setting up habits and routines, liturgies, if you will. We're going to talk more about that, especially in the month of December, as we go through Advent, we're going to talk a lot about liturgy. And I know that word, that word may be a little overwhelming for some, but it's essentially the habits and routines that we engage in. In a church setting, it's in our worship. So as we are working in our homes, we do want to set up habits and routines and put emphasis on the things that are important in our faith and see the way that they play out in our home. So we are definitely going to talk about that more in the month of December. As we're preparing now in the next few days coming up on Thanksgiving, this idea of gratitude and giving thanks and actually giving is only going to increase in the next coming weeks. If you are feeling overwhelmed or you find yourself in a state of that scarcity mindset, I want to encourage you to go back to God's word. Spend some time in prayer reminding yourself of who it is that provides for us. He will care for us. He will provide for us. All of these things that worry us and frustrate us and we're not really sure about, none of these are a surprise to God. He is sovereign over all of these things in our lives and we can trust that he will provide for us. And ultimately, he provided for us in a way that no one else could through his son, Jesus Christ. And we can find rest in knowing that his finished work on the cross 
is going to give us an eternal inheritance. And we won't have to worry about forgetting things or not having enough. God has provided all of these things for us. Thanks so much for watching. And until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight. Well, thank you for those of you that have stuck around until the end. It is family time. That's what we're going to start calling this little time after the video where we get to just talk about the things that are happening that are not necessarily related to all of this, but maybe are. So we have Thanksgiving coming up at our house, and this is my absolute favorite holiday to host for. I love to have Thanksgiving dinner. It feels like a little bit less pressure than Christmas, but it is just as fun with the hospitality and the good food. And I, I just, I love Love this time of year. So we are having turkey, of course, and canned cranberry sauce. I know. I want to know from you in the comments, are you a canned cranberry sauce or are you homemade cranberry sauce? And if you're canned, is it the jelly or is it the whole berry? I'm curious. And I'm also curious which one you think I prefer. So let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And when we come back next week, we're going to be diving straight in to Advent. And don't worry, we're staying on topic here. We're going to talk about strategic planning. We are going to talk about incorporating these themes into our household. And we're going to share a little bit of my favorite resources around Advent. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. And until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight. See, you got it twice.